One of the things I occasionally come back to in these videos, or I occasionally come back to in my mind whilst I'm thinking, I suppose, whilst I'm walking, is the significance of walking itself to thinking and imagining and constructing the world and those kind of processes. You know, what what is what is, what is particular about walking, if, if there is anything particular about it. Uh, I think there are some significant diff um, attributes to walking, significant features about the activity. Uh, and for me, it's something to do with a combination of the, the kind of phenomenological properties m of moving forward, which I'll talk about in a second, but uh, combined with the fact that that movement is self-initiated. It's, uh, it's a completely embodied activity. I'm not being pushed in a supermarket trolley along this path. I'm not on rails. I'm not uh, falling with gravity, except to the extent that walking is a constant falling and catching. Uh, so, in terms of the walking itself, there is a kind of, there is a very, it has a very particular perceptual uh, set of relations, or it sets up a set of particular perceptual relations. The fact that I'm walking. Uh, it orients optical flow in a very particular way. Optical flow happens all the time. If I stand still and just move my head around, uh, images are coming in through one side of my field of vision and flying out of the other. Various things are happening to the perspective as I do that. It's kind of ballooning and, uh, and diminishing as I move my head. So that, ha that optical flow is happening all the time anyway. But when I put myself in motion, uh, that optical flow takes on very particular characteristics. Uh, the world moves past me at an even rate on both sides. And to the extent that I do move my head around whilst I'm walking, that effect is kind of uh, averaged out by the fact that, that this, there's this consistent forward motion throughout. Uh, there's a very consistent process in which small objects in front of me in the distance gradually enlarge until they fill my visual field at the side uh, and then kind of disappear into the darkness behind my head. So again, it's a very, very consistent process there. I'm also constantly walking towards horizons of one sort or another, of course never reaching them. Uh, but there's always a horizon that I'm walking towards, not, so, not just walking towards, but usually I'm walking towards the center of it. My walk, the, the apparent destination of my walking at all times, is, uh, is a point that bisects that horizon perfectly and indeed the presumed direction of my walk at all times is perpendicular to that horizon and has a, you know, as a, if I was to draw it on a piece of paper it would be a huge T-shape. Uh, again, that's a consistency, it's a consistent aspect of, the, of this walking process. Uh, what else about it? The world is constantly slipping under my feet or soaring over my head. That's of course happening. Uh, there's various things happening to the sonic environment that I'm walking through. Uh, it's less marked, I suppose, than the visual one. But but certainly, uh, when I was just walking past some ducks back there, actually, I could, uh, indeed, I, could I could I never saw them because they were behind some bushes in a little pond that's down there. But I could hear them for quite a long time, and then the sound gradually became louder, more prominent, more oriented towards the side of my uh, the side of my aural field, I guess, and then disappeared behind me. And presumably the same things are happening to, to my olfaction and other things as well, maybe. Uh, and also this thing about walking is I've also got this constant rhythmic tactile sense against the ground. Very uh, consistent rhythmic pattern of pressure on the soles of one foot and pattern on the soles of the other foot. Uh, so these things are consistent. I think uh, well, just in terms of uh, inactive, the inactive nature of walking, I think that does make a difference. Walking is very different to, as I say, being pushed in a supermarket trolley or being on rails or being in a car or being on a fairground ride or falling under the influence of gravity. Uh, there is this kind of intentionality in the walk. There is the uh, I am propelling myself in this journey, so the, the extent to which the world is moving past me 
is the extent to which I am moving past the world, and I, you know, it's, I'm very embedded within that, and very complicit in that, of course. So there's something very cogent, for me at least, about that, which distinguishes it from other forms of, mo of motion. So it isn't just about optical flow, it isn't just about perspective. It's about the inactive relationship of the body to those features. Uh, yeah, I suppose what I'm just thinking about for myself there is to do with uh, a kind of poetics of walking. And here I'm, I'm just borrowing from uh, Michel de Certeau. He's got this great quotation uh, which begins with about, about the long poem of walking, which at the moment is on my... Uh, on my YouTube description, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's still there. I may have taken it down by the time this video is watched. But uh, it starts off with a long poem of walking, uh, and what I'm just thinking of there is in terms of, you know, to the extent that there is a, a kind of poetics of walking, uh, a kind of a, a possibility of the identification of certain features of walking, which lend them, which become part of a kind of. Uh, poetic, a set of poetic understandings, part of our poetic cognition, which lend themselves to uh, the understanding and comprehension of abstractions, to, to have all those features that, that uh, poetics does. Uh, it's got to be those kinds of features that I identify which distinguish walking from uh, other forms of moving or other kinds of features like optical flow which are present when you're just standing still and looking around, or uh, you know, other kinds of engagements.